Hi, my name is Dr. Doug Jackson. Welcome to this online overview of the Community Resiliency Model. The Community Resiliency Model, or CRIM, is six easily learned skills that you can use to reset your nervous system when you find yourself either overly agitated or flattened out by a situation that you find yourself in. Now, I'll provide a better definition of CRIM in a couple of moments, but in my experience, the best way to learn CRIM is to experience it. So, with your indulgence, I'd like to invite you to join me in an exercise. I'd like you to find a comfortable place to sit or stand or lay down, doesn't matter, just some place comfortable that you can maintain for a couple of moments. You don't need to be able to see the screen. I'm going to talk you through it. Hit pause if you need a moment to get yourself set up. With your eyes open or closed, whichever is more comfortable, take a moment to see if you can remember something that causes you to feel hopeful. Maybe it causes you to feel powerful, or maybe it even causes you to laugh. This could be the memory of a person, place, an activity, a skill, a hobby, a spiritual guide, an animal, anything that brings you joy, peace, and calm. Or perhaps a characteristic about yourself, or someone meaningful. A thought of someone's compassion, or maybe a sense of pride in your own abilities. You are athletic. You have a wonderful business sense. Or perhaps, particularly in these times, you draw strength on your own health. Sometimes people have a hard time coming up with anything. That's okay. You can literally dream up a characteristic that you wish you had. If you wish you had a superpower, what would it be? No need to overthink this. There are no wrong answers. Anything that is pleasant, inspiring, or hopeful. Feel free to hit pause if you need a moment. We are going to restart the lesson in about 15 seconds. If you have your eyes closed, you might want to open them in the next few seconds. Please bring your attention back into the room. Did something come to mind? Good. Let's see if we can relax into it a little bit. If it was a memory, what was the weather like? What was the temperature like? Was it warm, hot? Was it neutral? Was it chilly? If the memory was of a person, can you remember what that person's voice sounds like? If what you thought of was a characteristic of yourself, that you're athletic, were you able to think of a particular instance where that characteristic was able to help you feel more successful? Were there any smells involved? Did you touch anything? The more that we can bring sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, the more vividly we can bring those to mind the more successful an exercise like this can become. So see if you can settle in and see whether you can bring those sorts of characteristics to mind. Hit pause if you need to. So, how did that exercise land in your body? Were there particular places that you noticed in your body as you did that exercise? And as you noticed those places in your body, what sensations came up? Were those sensations pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? That's really our first crim question, because the ability to discriminate between a pleasant sensation, an unpleasant sensation, or a neutral sensation gives us the foundation and the freedom to be able to recognize how a sensation feels and if it's a sensation which is knocking us off of our stride, that we can choose to bring another sensation to mind that helps us get back on, on track. 
The Community Resiliency Model, or CRIM, is a set of six easily learned skills developed by Elaine Miller Karras at the Trauma Resource Institute in Claremont, California. Now, CRIM skills are designed to be trained in an interactive manner. In other words, they are not designed to be trained by people who are sitting in front of a computer screen being talked at. So, let's be honest, this is kind of the antithesis of how CRIM should be taught. But, I'm developing these at the request of Jewel Gooding, who is Executive Director of the Georgia Chapter of Mental Health of America, and with the permission of the Trauma Resource Institute, to be able to present this in these very difficult times. Now, the COVID-19 epidemic is certainly distressing. These skills can be used to help either lower the distress or even turn distress into resiliency. When this whole business calms down, and it will calm down, I'll probably take these uh, videos offline and we'll go back to training CRIM the way it's supposed to be taught, in person. But I hope that you find that, these, that this presentation is useful and even maybe a little bit enjoyable. Your nervous system is capable of rallying to meet challenges and after the challenges have passed, it recharges. Now, you don't need to order this resiliency system from Amazon. You were born with it. It's your birthright. Lucky you. Generally in life, we rally to meet challenges, we recover, and we're more or less competent in lives. We show up as more or less our best selves. Now in CRIM, we call that the resilient zone. Notice I didn't call it the happy zone. Challenges are usually unexpected, unwelcome, not happy events, thus the challenges bit. But we face challenges and we can feel irritated and still we get things done, it's okay. Or we can face challenges and feel a little down about it, like, oh, geez, do we have to do this again? But you get it done and it's okay. But then life throws curveballs. So something happens that just knocks you out of your zone completely. And you might get knocked into the high zone. That zone where you feel irritated, anxious, painful. Or you might get down, knocked down into a low zone where you feel numb and flattened, sad, isolated. And the thing is, is that once you get knocked out of your zone, it can feel a little difficult to get back in the zone. And that's when CRIM skills come in to be useful. For reasons that are beyond the scope of this video, the width of a person's resilient zone varies from person to person. It can also vary throughout the course of a lifetime. If you practice the CRIM skills that we're teaching, it's quite likely that your resilient zone will actually grow, become wider. And there are lots of other practices that can help widen your zone too. Healthy relationship, uh, diet, exercise, uh, spiritual practices, meaningful employment, you know, all the usual suspects. And the width of your resilient zone also can change from day to day. Now, most days when I'm not sheltering in place because of COVID, I go to Atlanta about three or four times a week, and that means spending an hour or so on I-20 headed west. So let's imagine a morning when I pull onto I-20. I don't know what's going on, but there's nobody else headed west on I-20. I, it's just me. You know, put on cruise control, start up an audiobook, whoosh. You know, my zone's going to be pretty wide on that day. It's going to take a lot to knock me off my stride. Or let's imagine the opposite day. I pull onto I-20 and every knucklehead in Georgia is on I-20 headed west. 
and every single one of them has cut me off in traffic. Now, my zone's going to be pretty narrow on that day. It's not going to take a lot to knock me out of my zone on that kind of a day. Okay, so here's the thing. After my drive-in, I get on the elevator, I go up and I go to my cubicle and there's this piece of paper facing, face down on my chair. Now, y'all know what that means. That means that somebody way above me in the food chain has said, you will attend to whatever it is on this piece of paper next, regardless of what else is going on in your life, next. Okay. Now, I've been working on a project for the last couple of weeks, and it's due in two weeks. So, you will meet with your boss's 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 boss at 2 o'clock this afternoon and give that boss a briefing on the project that's not due for two weeks. Boom. Now, let's imagine that happened on the every knucklehead in Georgia's on I-20 day. And so my zone is pretty narrow to start with. How do you think I'm going to react to that? Well, I got a pretty good guess. Chances are that under my breath, I'm swearing a blue streak. And I'm blessing out and just crying mercy and how unfair life is to anybody who will listen. Anybody who unfortunately can't get away fast enough when they see me coming. What problem does that solve? Well, it doesn't solve, the, it doesn't help me get ready for the uh, meeting at 2 o'clock. In fact, it actually gets in the way because by staying so amped up, I'm actually having a harder time thinking straight. Or, what would happen on that morning when there was nobody on I-20 except me? I mean, I'm still not going to be thrilled. That, that message is still going to go boom in my head. But I'm probably going to be thinking about solutions. I'm probably going to be thinking I need to get in touch with my boss and let her know I am doing nothing but getting ready for this meeting this morning. Please clear the road for me. Tell people not to bug me if she can. I'm going to be thinking who else has worked on this project who can help me generate some ideas. I'm going to be thinking what do we got in the can that is the most promising thing that we've come up with that's going to help us to show the promise of this project. In other words, I'm going to be thinking about solutions. And that's where CRIM becomes so useful. We're going to have times when we get knocked out of our zone. But if we can use skills to get back in the zone, we can show up as our best versions of ourselves. We can show up as competent employees, competent teammates, competent spouses, competent parents. We can show up as something pretty close to our best selves. So let's pop the hood on your brain and have a look at how this resiliency stuff works.